An inferior alveolar nerve block would be indicated if you require pulpal anesthesia of molar and premolar teeth or if you are completing quadrant work requiring anesthesia of the gingiva and connective tissue in that quadrant. This injection targets the inferior alveolar nerve in the pterygomandibular space. Therefore, the incisive and mental terminal branches are also anesthetized. In the pterygomandibular space, the anesthetic solution diffuses to the lingual nerve as well. Therefore, the lingual nerve is also targeted by the inferior alveolar nerve block technique. The inferior alveolar nerve supplies the pulp of all mandibular teeth. It also supplies the buccal gingiva and periosteum, connective tissues and mucous membranes anterior to the first molar. The lingual nerve supplies the lingual gingiva, floor of mouth and anterior two thirds of the tongue. The target bony site is superior to the lingula on the medial border of the ramus of the mandible. This targets the inferior alveolar nerve prior to its entry into the mandibular foramen. A long needle will need to be used for this injection. The first part of the technique is palpating the coronoid notch and then moving our finger or thumb medially to palpate the internal oblique ridge. This is on the right hand side. We'll also demonstrate on the left hand side, like so. Then we're going to identify the pterygomandibular raphe, which is the soft tissue band running along here, and the pterygotemporal depression lateral to the raphe. We're then going to use our mirror to retract the soft tissue. We never retract using our fingers um, to prevent Sharpe's injuries. We're going to place the syringe barrel over the contralateral premolars like so and prepare to insert the needle. The height of insertion is determined by a number of factors including the coronoid notch, the deepest point of the depression and it's usually placed around 10 millimeters above the occlusal plane. So we insert the needle approximately 20 to 25 millimeters so about two thirds to three quarters of a long needle there should be no resistance until you gently contact the bone. Then we're going to aspirate, gently pulling back on the ring to ensure that we haven't pierced the blood supply and then we will deposit the solution slowly. The target bony site is the anterior border of the ramus, targeting the nerve as it leaves the pterygomandibular space crossing the ramus of the mandible before it pierces the buccinator. The soft tissue landmark is the mucous membrane distal and buccal to the last molar in the arch. You need to orient the syringe so that it is parallel to the occlusal plane on the side of the injection. The needle length may be long or short. Usually this injection is used in conjunction with an IAN block, in which case you would continue to use the same long needle. You insert the needle two to three millimeters and deposit approximately 0.2 to 0.3 mils of solution.